Hey floss tube friends! I finished this little black work piece and was thinking it would make a nice project bag. I mentioned in a previous video that I'd found the pattern in a book by Jane Greenoff that I discovered while browsing my local library. The pattern was a little bigger than I wanted, so I left out the bear, the snail, and the gorilla and tweaked the grass and leaves. I just needed to wash out the blue water soluble pen marks I'd made while experimenting with the placement of everything. I typically do wash all of my cross stitch pieces before framing or sewing them, but I use DMC floss that is very reliable and won't bleed. It's a good idea to get out any oils from our hands so there's less chance of yellowing. I just use a little regular laundry detergent, swish it around uh, for a bit, and then give it a good rinse and a gentle squeeze. Then roll it in a towel to get most of the water out. Then give it a bit of a stretch in both directions to prevent some of the wrinkling as it dries, uh, especially since this was stitched on Ada. I was just checking to make sure the blue ink came out since there was a fair bit of it. I kept changing my mind about what to put in the space between the hippo and the koala. I really like the combination of the black and gold. I'd like to use this technique again in future projects. This is my rescue cat from our Sarnia thrift store expedition with my friends from an earlier video. I like making my own Q-snap type frames um, and this is about the largest frame I'll go uh, so I think this is the size I want for my project bag. I took measurements to figure out how tall and wide to make it and added just a bit of extra space in the width to make sure I can slide it in and out okay. I jotted down the size I want to be, uh, roughly 20 inches wide by 19 inches tall, and then I figured out what pieces I would need to put around each side. I know I want to use a lighter fabric on both sides and the top of the cross stitch, and a darker contrasting fabric for about the bottom mm, third quarter of the bag. Okay, so if my bag is 20 and a half inches wide and my cross stitch is 14 and a half inches wide, I'll need the sides to be about three inches each uh, plus a half inch seam allowance on all sides. And if my length is 19 inches and my cross stitch is nine and a half inches, I can put a three inch piece at the top and uh, a six and a half inch contrasting piece at the bottom uh, plus seam allowances. Here's another little close-up of these little blackwork critters before we stitch them all up. They are just so cute. I pinned and stitched each side, then pressed my seams flat, and then I top stitched.
and then I did the same for the bottom piece. and the top piece. For the back, I stitched three pieces together, all the same width and height as the front sections, and then top stitch in contrasting thread. And then realized afterwards I could have just cut two pieces. <laughs> I wanted the bag to have a bit of padding and weight to it, uh, but rather than getting some quilted fabric, I just used some broadcloth and fleece uh, that I had in my fabric stash um, and then sandwiched the layers together. After cutting the layers to size, I ran them through the sewing machine to quilt them together, uh, just skipping over the cross stitch in the center. I was trying to decide whether to quilt in the black thread or the white thread here. Ugh, bobbin refilling. Is there anyone who loves bobbin refilling? Okay, so I quilted the front and the back pieces, and then I made a couple of straps out of contrasting fabric uh, by just folding them over a couple of times and stitching them down, uh, and then giving them a good pressing. After a bit of contemplating which way to put the straps, I folded over the top edges and pinned them in place. Then gave them a press and then trimmed and positioned the straps between the layers. Then I stitched them in place for both the front and the back pieces. And then stitched the front and back together. I trim the seams. then zigzag the edges. And lastly, I mitered the bottom corners. And there she is! I really like the way she turned out and how the bottom sits nicely. Let's see how Rescue Cat fits in. Now, she's in a slightly smaller frame at this point. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with the look and feel of the bag. I like the fabric I found for it.
The black fabric is all little critter footprints, which made me laugh when I was picking it up in the store. How perfect is that? I later decided to unmiter the corners and just pull out those stitches so my frame fits in better. Hopefully you enjoyed this little project and maybe found it helpful. If you made it this far, please click the like button to let me know and maybe consider subscribing. 